Happy New Year, everyone. It is, um, we are 4.15 on January 5th, 2024. Hope everyone had a great holiday season. I'll be here just going to give you a quick update on uh, what's going on this week, what I see ahead. We uh, I do have a presentation as per usual that uh, that I do later at the end of this month. Where we'll talk about what's going on in the markets, the world, what we saw, what we didn't see, what uh, we expect to happen this year. And uh, we'll start you off this week with uh, Janet Yellen coming out today saying uh, she's taking care of everything. We're going to have a soft landing and everything's under control. So anytime a central banker says something like that and it hits the front page of The Economist, it's got to feel my spidey sense is telling me that something uh, might be out of line here. So, so that came out today. Jobs numbers, I'll give you an update on that. But uh, certainly I hope everyone had a nice holiday season and uh, got some rest and ready for 20. 24. I'm excited about uh, what's ahead. Lots to cover. The last six weeks of the markets uh, last year were quite good, so we had strong results, good good performance, which we'll cover that in a bit more detail in the annual. But uh, this week, just want to give you a quick update on what happened and uh, lead you into what's going to happen from here on. On the positive news side of things, uh, we've hired a new associate. Uh, we'll have more details about her shortly. Um, that's all confirmed. She is slated to start on January 15th, so that's exciting. But just give you an update on how we started this year as well. So pretty mixed start to the year. TSX was flat down just slightly. Uh, both NASDAQ and um, the S&P were down uh, 1.5%, 3% uh, respectively in those. Bonds were down a little bit start the year. US dollar was a bit stronger. And uh, certainly some of the cryptos are continuing to grab attention where Bitcoin is up 6% or so and Solana is up about 15% this week. Lots to cover on the the Bitcoin ETF, uh, spot ETF that I've been talking about on and off over the last, uh, we'll say, 18 months. So I expect the SEC to have some results or some answer on that next week. Uh, they've gone back and forth with BlackRock, I think, trying to get the uh, the wording and the legalese right uh, in order to make sure everything's on track uh, for that. So we'll continue to watch that from here. So uh, without further ado, just going to jump into some of the slides, a few of the things that I saw this week that I thought may, might be of interest and frame my thinking. And so we'll put that uh, up into um, up into the queue here. There we go. Perfect. Um, let me see if I can get myself up in there as well. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Let's see if we can get that those both to uh, happen at the same time. All right, so as that uh, starts to populate, there we go. So um, there was jobs numbers both in Canada and the U.S. today. You can parse them however you want, but if you uh, if you do and follow any economists in detail, whether it's Steph Pomboy or David Rosenberg, um, certainly as they deep dive into the information, you'll see that the data wasn't great. Um, I thought this was a great chart to look at it. Uh, this is U.S. number of multiple jobs, so uh, hits an all-time high. So most in history where people have had more than one job. So it's really a healthy job market if that's the case. If you look at full-time employment, it's been falling. Um, and uh, so if you look at this, this is, a, I thought, a great chart to just kind of give you a layout for how that looks. From a Canadian data perspective, we saw that we added uh, 100 total jobs. Um, 100. Um, if you again look at that, that was almost completely 43,000 um, full-time jobs were lost, 43,000 uh, part-time jobs were added. So you had a kind of a, a wash in that. If you looked at where the jobs came from as well, um, certainly heavily weighted towards government and we'll say healthcare. Um, uh, similar in the U.S., healthcare and science, these big kind of an, an anomaly uh, jobs numbers were a little bit better than expected. So but this is uh, a statement that I think is worth uh, worth paying attention to. <clears throat> the other uh, point is on um, the temporary services growth rate. Yeah, again, so when we're looking at at the quality of of the details, so we're looking back, and uh, you know, the only time we ever see these levels start to drop to this point, we're either in a recession or in the early stages of one. So temporary help. Excuse me, continues to fall there as well. 
The other thing that grabbed my attention, which uh, some of you may have followed the bank term funding program. So, you know, this was uh, launched uh, effectively uh, oh, less than a year ago now. So March of 2023, where um, it was a facility effectively put in place um, to shore up uh, Silicon Valley Bank. Hard to believe that it's less than a year ago. It feels like 100 years ago now when I talk about it. Um, but bank term funding program was effectively put in place to provide liquidity into the banking system as the banks are looking to uh, make sure that they have enough money available to lend and, and uh, uh, give people money back that they're looking for. This number has started to tick up quite dramatically here in the last uh, three or four weeks and uh, certainly very important to think about what uh, kind of an impact this is going to have likely on the economy. Uh, for me, obviously, it's an election year, so um, some of you may follow predict it. I think it's probably a great place to look and consider, not necessarily the traditional um, places you'd look to say how and how people are doing, but it's essentially a system where people buy. They can, you can buy based on, on this. So effectively, if you are betting on Joe Biden to be the Democratic presidential nomination, if you put in a dollar, or sorry, if you put in 77 cents, you get a dollar back. So when you think about it this way, this is effectively uh, people voting uh, physical dollars to see what's gonna happen with both the presidential and dom uh, Democratic and Republican um, nominations. So President Trump and Joe Biden continue to be top of that. Nikki Haley and Gabby, Ga Gavin Newsom continue to be the, the respective uh, uh, second runners right now. This will be interesting to watch to see how it progresses. Nikki Haley seems to be getting a lot of positive attention and Gavin Newsom does as well. So I continue to watch this. I don't think it has a material impact on the economy, but uh, in, in this calendar year, but cer certainly something I think we need to continue to pay attention to as um, as things progress from here. As I think about investing, obviously, and now we kind of switch gears a little bit from economics to uh, economics and politics to a little bit of investing and looking forward. So it's been something that I've, I've talked about for a long time now, just about ESG and investing and where that's coming and how it's going to come from. I thought this was an interesting report that just puts out, you know, there still is lots of potential for, for solar and wind power to replace some of these um, these other fuels and stores of energy. So lots of potential opportunity on the back half of last year, quite a challenging year for these companies because they're very uh, cap CapEx uh, heavy. And so borrowing at higher levels, put pressure on these businesses. So from a risk reward infrastructure opportunity perspective, uh, I think there's a lot of potential here with solar and particularly some of the Canadian companies that uh, are wind power providers like, um, like, um, I've mentioned in the past with Northland Power. Um, so, you know, as we think about the world and how it's evolving and what people do and if they wear their smart watches and what they've been doing with that, you know, again, if you're thinking about consumers and where they're going to spend their dollars going forward, um, there is uh, is tremendous amount of attention paid towards health monitoring and uh, people taking care of themselves. And so, you know, I think there's opportunities there to consider where we are in the cycle. Um, if we are kind of late cycle, uh, what what happens from here? You know, does this present opportunities with companies like Nike? Um, some people would say more direct like Apple, but you know, I think this is something uh, to consider when we're thinking about if kind of investment themes longer term. Maybe you don't get some of the fast food companies and this could be uh, something that should do well for people uh, kind of me medium long term. And so Nike's one of those like, companies that, that's jumped up to me. So just when we look at what's ahead from here, a um, couple of quick slides. Uh, this week was quite quiet in Canada, um, but uh, today was a little bit busier. And then as we go into the next couple of weeks, more data starts to kick in, inflation data. And then uh, on the 24th of this month, we have Bank of Canada with their decision on what's going on with rates. So lots of, th lots of time and attention still paying towards that. That'll be the week likely that I uh, have the annual outlook, uh, but we'll provide more details as, as we get closer to that. And uh, that's it for now for me um, on the uh, on the charts of the day. Um, we are approaching here uh, for for thirty or so. All right. <clears throat> 
And uh, I hope uh, everyone's had a great holiday season. Um, lots of things to cover this year. Excited about that. Have a new associate coming on, so we'll have some communication about that when she joins. But uh, I appreciate you as always coming in, listening to her. What I have to say, looking forward to another great year together. Um, any questions, any any time, feel free to give me a call. Send me an email, book a meeting. Got lots of things to cover right now, um, going through taxes, updates, things like that. But uh, as always, I appreciate your time and uh, thanks very much. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye for now.